Exoghost at the end of the act. Really, really like a 250 gold star for sure. I love money. I sure do, especially when it comes at the cost of max health. I think this is consistently what this particular one. Lose max HP, gain 250 gold. Very consistently one of the strongest starts that you can get in Slay the Spire. That's because you're trading away something that doesn't have any disadvantage. Not immediately, anyway. In fact, losing 6 max health can gain us a few current health over the course of Act 1 uh, because of damage events or such. And then once you get to a shop, that's enough money to buy anything combined with the starting money that you have. You'll end up with 350 gold, a little bit more from that from the opening encounters, so... Well over the amount required for either one rare or uncommon relic of your choice, or two commoner shop relics. Do I risk Act 1 events for money? So already chat asking, once you're here, do you split left or right to get to the shop? And the answer for me is, it really depends on what our rewards have been from the first two combats. Do we feel like we need more card rewards? If so, we'll go here. Did we get no potions? If so, we'll go for the combats. But if we get good cards and potions from the first two fights, we'll take the events. That said, there's other options. We could go to this store, maybe? Mm, no, I don't like that very much. I think that's Elite into Burning Elite with no upgrade anywhere along the way. I think that's risky beyond reason. Could go to this shop, but I'm not sure why you would. I'm thinking, yeah, we probably go one of these two routes. It's going to depend on, again, what we see. Hit this early shop, try to gear up for elites here, and then try to knock out two elites. But there's always the don't. Um, we could even, if there's truly nothing of value in this shop, go to this shop instead. Shop genality, as it were. I guess I'll mark this in red. And we'll be evaluating at each of these floors. Are we are we yet ready to take on an elite? Or do we need more? From there we get a couple upgrades or whatever, and we'll just try to build a deck out of all the card rewards and such that we get going into Hexaghost here. Maybe going this way for that last extra event, but we could reasonably go for an extra combat instead. It'd be nice to knock out the burning elite. I really like uh, this path, by the way. Uh, I'm just going to mark this in blue here. We're not going to take this path, I don't think. But an early upgrade, elite upgrade, take out the burning elite, get another upgrade, take out another elite. That's four rest sites and three elites. And that's pretty juicy. That might well be a better start. Ultimately. But it really does require committing in a different way. Yeah, I'd, I'd be much more confident with this path if we had some kind of immediate advantage that we could use. An upgrade, a card... I would, I would be much happier with this if I got a card removal start. Remove one defend, or remove two defends, or transform something. Would make this blue path a lot more valuable, but we don't actually have a starting bonus that really behooves taking that. So I think I'm going to go green here. Not so lousy. I think we just full block and use our starting miracle, ever so valuable on the Watcher, that starting miracle. Letting you have four energy on any one turn of your choosing. I like to think of this as a much better lantern. It's one energy on turn one, or if I don't want to use it on turn one, I get to save it for later. That's a pretty good relic. Bop the one with eight health, because that's the one we're more likely to want to kill next turn. Probably strike, strike, defend. Take two. Or... Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Very happy with a two damage fight. Get a little bit of dollars and... Very cromulent first cards. Honestly, any of these are takeable. 
If we were fighting Guardian, I'd be more inclined for Protect. But for a first attack, both Crush Joints and Empty Fist are excellent. With no defend removals yet, uh, I'm highly in favor of Empty Fist to give us an, a way to get out of Wrath Stance. This is also a, a very nice early card to upgrade, doing 14 damage upgraded. It's a real blapper of a card. Sarah Timiel says, any idea when I'm doing Downfall again? Yes, we'll be doing some Downfall tomorrow on stream. As well as playing modded Spire otherwise. As a uh, sort of regular celebration for all the support the stream gets, we've overfilled that meter below my face thanks to the incredible support yesterday. Well, my focus today is on continuing the streak. We'll make tomorrow a day of rest and celebration going into the weekend. Yes, we are 150 subs above goal. I, I don't know that you were here at the end of the defect run yesterday, but uh, people were pretty stoked that we managed to win the hard fight. To the tune of about 150 gifted subs. Yeah, exactly, Theodore. Did that cursed defect run really win? How? How did it possibly happen? And yet it did. Mm. I I still can't believe it. I think I like the Empty Fist more than the Crush Joint, so though only just barely. And we can use that extra energy immediately as well. So here I can bank energy with Calm. We can go Defend Vigilance, or I can go Vigilance, Empty Fist, Strike Defend, keep my Miracle, and deal a whole bunch of damage. The power of Empty Fist. Look at that. Look at the power of Empty Fist. That Jawworm just got destroyed. Oh ho, and we get offered a Sans O Time. Or a Bowling Bash. Sands of Time, probably the better answer to the Hexaghost. Although I do like Bowling Bash as an early answer to the Three Sentries fight. Something that can really give the Watcher some trouble. Hmm. Follow-up's also quite reasonable. As an attack in its own right. Hmm. I really like Sands of Time. It's extremely good against Legavulin and Gremlinob. A worse bomb? No way. The key thing about Sands of Time is that you can pay more energy up front if you have it to deal the damage immediately. You cannot make bomb go off instantly, no matter what. But Sands of Time, you can just pay four. It's expensive, but you can do it. And that is crucial. Since we got no potions, I'm going to go two more combats. I'd like to fill up the potion slots before we try to fight elites, and I don't really want to have to shell out money for potions when I could be shelling out money for relics. You can with Vault, that's true. Begrudgingly, I admit that you're correct. Technically correct. The best kind of correct. Next turn, Eruption, Miracle, Sands of Time. Absolutely donks this fool. Actually, we don't even need a miracle. Easy 40. Sneko Oil, actually very, very good with the Sands of Time. This is, if we use the Sneko Oil to either draw or on the turn that we do have already drawn the Sands of Time, it's guaranteed to get cheaper. And I don't have to choose between Sands of Time and Bowling Bash if I don't want. I can just take both. And I think I will take both. Bowling Bash deals 7 damage for each enemy in combat. I think a, a critically underrated, maybe not critically, a, a consistently overlooked Watcher damage option that can really, really help out. Keep this miracle for our Sands of Time. It's no longer worth spending it on strikes when we have a guaranteed big damage card coming up. Uh-oh. Hmm. I mean, he does at maximum 9 damage to me next turn, and I always keep the Sands of Time in my hand, so I think we just allow this to happen. I could use the Sneko Oil there. Now we only take 4. But instead we'll just kill him next turn with the Sands of Time, since it retains. No problemo.
And if we want a little bit more area damage, there's a Consecrate, a free area attack. This would be the last attack card we add for a while if I choose to add it. We're definitely a little bit behind on upgrades. We'd like to upgrade most of these attacks. At the minimum, Eruption, Sands of Time, and Empty Fist all pretty strongly require upgrades here. I like Crush Joints for its potential to make Sands of Time do dramatically more damage to Hexaghost. I like it with the Miracle as well, in general. So, the good news is, even though we've only got one potion, I feel more than capable of fighting this elite. And we already have a Bowling Bash. Let's do the Crush Joints. Let's, let's get Vulnerable added in here and see what the shop contains. Tragically, not Apotheosis. Unacceptable. However, there's some other really nice stuff here. Meat on the Bone is a, a very powerful source of not hemorrhaging health. If we're at or below half health at the end of combat, heal for 12. Allows us to take fairly aggressive paths and lots of combats without having to worry about health. Um, there's also Orange Pellets. If we play a power attack and skill in the same turn, we can remove all debuffs from ourselves. This is a way to, to shore ourselves up against the heart much, much, much later in this run. Also lets us take a Fasting if we find one at any point, which would be pretty dang good. But there's no Fasting here now, so I'm less inclined to take Pellets over, say, Meat on the Bone. Could get behind pellets remove block potion, maybe, instead of buying orange pellets. Or instead of buying meat on the bone. The thing about meat on the bone is sometimes it ends up irrelevant if you don't take damage in the first place. Either way, we get to go left here. It's also Ragnarok on sale, which hits pretty hard, but is yet another card wanting an upgrade. I generally don't like paying for Ragnarok. I'm okay to take one if I see one offered to me randomly, but I'm usually not cool with paying for it. The thing with the pellets is I need to be able to take powers, happy with Brushdown, Mental Fortress, that sort of thing. Really like the pellets for later on. We're already pretty well set for that first elite, especially with the Sneko Oil. And we're fighting Hexaghost, which makes me less inclined to go meat on the bone. I want this more against actually Guardian, of all things. It's a boss we need reasonable health for. Slime boss wouldn't be much of a deal either. Honestly, I don't... I don't see us needing this meat that much. Let's go with the Orange Pellets line. Gotta get rid of a Defend. So we can draw consistent damage draws. I'm gonna keep some of this money, but I will buy a block potion just for safety's sake. I'm, I'm quite sure we're going to use a potion in this first Elite. Probably the Sneko Oil. It'll be best before we upgrade Eruption, after all. Could opt for Flex Potion over Block Potion. I do not know if that's actually better, though. I like the Block Potion more flexible overall than the Flex Potion. How ironic. Okay. And when we go to a shop in Act 2, we'll have enough money for a Relic or two as well. That'll be exciting. This also gives us reasonable cause to pick up the first... ...power that we see from here on out. So I'm not going to be able to play that, unless I snack a oil, in which case I can probably just win now. Yeah, if I snack a whale, this is guaranteed to get into my hand and be playable. Uh, I don't think I have a kill here, right? Since I couldn't end my turn with a skill. If I could have... Maybe I wanted to keep the uh, Miracle for this turn, actually, for that reason. This looks like it would have been a kill if I had, instead of playing the second strike. But I'm quite happy to use the snack a whale here. Let's do that. 
Draw five cards and then randomize the cost of everything in my hand. Sands of Time, now free. Strikes, now free. Thank you. Sneka Oil. We get the Gremlin Horn from the Gremlin Knob, as well as a potion to replace that Sneka Oil, as well as a choice of these three honestly pretty skippable cards. Gotta love when the Knob drops his horn. It's cool stuff. Gremlin knobs are capable of growing until the day they die. Remarkable. Pretty happy skipping these. There's some maybe theoretical use for collect, but this this is a pretty stinky card by and large. Let's get that eruption upgraded, shall we? Got to make that one cost. So critical. All right, sentries are up next. I've got a gremlin knob and a gremlin horn and a bowling bash. So prepare, you fools. All right, here's the real question: Can I kill the front one? This does twenty-one. Seven times three, plus twelve, is thirty-three. If I strength potion, we can kill the front one, right? Diba. What enemy in the Spire is the most dissatisfied? The Dissentries. Keep spreading lies. Time for calculating. Uh, 9 times 3 is 27, plus 8, plus 8. Okay, so I'd have to do all the attacks to kill the front one. Actually, wait, that, that does 43 damage, so I can't kill the back one, unfortunately. Only one of these has really low health. Okay, that's fine. Being able to kill a sentry on turn one is a really big deal. I'm gonna willingly take five, rather than using the miracle. I think we might need that for something later. Hmm. I see. So we can deal 11 plus 20 plus 22. That definitely kills either of them here. And then I could Miracle Vigilance at the end. So we might as well kill the one that's not attacking us so that we don't get attacked next turn. We take two this turn, go to 47, and win the fight with the block potion still. Chat asks, would I take Collect with Ice Cream? No. No, it's, it's just a matter of how many turns it takes for Collect to actually do useful things. Didn't get the Sands of Time, sadly. With Chemical X, maybe, but then you're presupposing that I've purchased Chemical X on Watcher and something's already gone wrong there. Aw, oh, so close. All right, five more. I'm cool with that still. Got plenty of health to spare. We get a bag of marbles, making enemies vulnerable on turn one, and there is a power like water. We're in calm at the end of turn, gain five block. I do enjoy like water as a card, but you really need two, maybe three calm sources before it's an actually good card. I'm going to skip all these. Definitely not going to pick up a pressure points here. So, how do we feel? Events versus combats. I've got one potion still. We've got a pretty developed deck. I'd rather take an event than a combat. So, let's, let's grab this. We really don't need much more for Hexaghost. For Hexaghost, I want to upgrade Crush Joints and Sands of Time, and then we should be pretty settled. Singing Bowl, also very, very good early. When adding cards to the deck, we can instead skip to gain two max health. This is a very, very promising start, relic-wise. I'd say four good relics in a row so far. That's going to start giving us max health gradually. We can skip quite happily a lot, uh, with Watcher especially. So this will be a steady flow of hit points. Although it makes me wish maybe slightly that I'd taken the meat on the bone. 
I still don't feel like we're going to end up needing it. Greetings, nerds. Repair. To die. Keep the miracle because of Santa time. Precisely. All right, back up to two potions. Oh, Prostrate Inner Peace Crescendo. I do really, really like Inner Peace and what it can do for a Watcher deck. Inner Peace also makes it more likely for us to want other powers later. Makes it easier for us to take a second Wrath Source. Very, very happy with an Inner Peace. Exclamation point WR is the, the record. There you go. Cruel Pack's got it. Let's take inner peace. Our uh, event ends up being five more max health for us. I think that's better than a combat, which would have been a little bit of gold in two max health. I don't need the banana here. We're going into the fight against Hexaghost, where lower health is arguably better because of Hexaghost's turn two divider attack. So a delicious donut is all right by me. Completely content losing health here. We could have maybe used the Dexterity Potion in either this fight or the coming fight. You could consider that. 9 plus 18 plus 21, super duper damage. Easy math for yourself, by the way. If you're trying to evaluate Vulnerable plus Wrath, just triple the base damage of the card. Strike does 6, so triple is 18. Bowling Bash does 7, triple is 21. Yeah, we could have used the next potion to save too. Worship versus Master Reality versus Empty Body. How intriguing. Currently not creating any cards. Worship's a big expensive mantra card that I don't much like. Empty Body is another way out of Wrath, which is not bad, but I've already got an empty fist. I think we just take two more health here. There's maybe an argument for Master Reality because of orange pellets, but... Until I actually have the dead branch, I'm not interested. And I'm going this way. You can't tell me what to do, map colors. Uh-oh. I mean, actually, this is going to be super easy. Fat Gremlin first, then Wizard next, then the Shield Gremlin, then the Mad Gremlin is our order of killing here. This is probably one of the easiest set of four Gremlins that we could have gotten. Look at this, only 10 damage headed our way on turn one. Not a problem at all with Gremlin Horn. Not a problem at all. I don't even need Vigilance. Just weaken the Wizard. Completely free fight overall. Three energy. Three energy. Um, I guess I kill you instead. Swift potion's pretty good. We want a second Rad Source right now. We could consider Simmering Fury. Simmering Fury says, at the start of your next turn, enter Wrath and draw two. This is not the Wrath card I want, but it is a Wrath card we could take. I'm also pretty happy with two more max health. Rage Maw says, how does the Shield Gremlin pick its target? Totally at random. Totally at random. Serene Fury is the poor man's rushdown. I mean, it is card draw, which is rather nice. Just like other Wrath Sources gets better with rushdown. 
Not as good with Rushdown as uh, Tantrum is, though. I take Master Reality with Nilri's Codex. Hmm. It's a fun little combo. I don't think that alone, that Nilri's alone would be sufficient, though. Oh, silent. Okay. I'm trying to figure out your question there, AO87. I, I think one of the big contributing factors to Silent's lower base win rate is her larger starting deck. 12 starter cards rather than 10 for the other characters. That has a, a big, big role in it. It's also the lowest damage output of any starting deck for the Silent. I'm gonna opt not. Do I go Swift Potion over Block Potion? Swift Potion seems really valuable. All right, we bought the Block Potion for safety, didn't end up needing it, so we are down 50 gold. I figured we might be, but that's okay. We're still well ahead of where we need to be, ultimately. All right, upgrade the Sands of Time. And our goal is just to play Sands of Time with Vulnerable and Wrath uh, once or twice during this fight. We have the Stance Potion to ensure we can't get caught in Wrath at an improper time. We've luckily drawn our Sands of Time on turn one, so it's going to get nice and cheap very quickly this fight. Uh, although we might end up taking a full 24 damage next turn. We'll see. Oh no, we drew much better than that. Could even Vigilance Inner Peace if I wanted to. Although next turn looks like we get to Eruption, Sands of Time, Empty Fists, so... Let's just Vigilance Crush Joints, or maybe Vigilance Defend Miracle Crush Joints. Played that Miracle for 5 health? Yeah, let's do it. I'll take 6 more on this turn, which I'm completely okay with. Bonk. 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 Hexaghost is already almost dead. Not the draw I was looking for. Here's where we could consider using the Swift Potion. I think I'd rather just trade the health, keep both of these potions going into Act 2. This also would have been a good time for Block Potion. But I, I really, really like these as Act 2 potions, and I, I don't feel like we need to expend any resource to get through this fight. So, I'm not afeard. Perfect. We drew Eruption, Sands of Time together again. That's what I said. We needed to play Eruption with Vulnerable and Sands of Time twice, and that's exactly what we did. GG. There's a lesson learned here. A very, very powerful card for this character in particular. Lesson learned deals 10 damage. If we can kill our foe with it, we permanently upgrade a random card in our deck. And that's a very good thing indeed. It's also another copy of Master Reality, letting us upgrade created cards, of which we have none, or Alpha, which creates cards. Alpha, Beta, Omega, a progression of three, which eventually becomes a massive area damage engine. We've done an Alpha, Beta, Omega deck before. It's a surprisingly difficult thing to build around, but uh, can work pretty well. But I think this is by far most easy with a lesson learned. And then as far as boss relics go, the world is our oyster. We'd be okay with a pyramid or a Sneko Eye. We'd be okay with any form of non-energy boss relic. I'd be cool with a Black Star. I'd be cool with an Empty Cage. I'd be cool with an Astrolabe. And I would be cool with any energy relic, even maybe the Busted Crown because of Singing Bowl, although it'd be pretty leery overall. I'd begrudgingly consider an Ectoplasm. I'm cool with the Violet Lotus because we have two calm sources. It's really hard to imagine a, a boss relic that's not helpful here, which means I think we're going to have a, a really easy pick of three. Oh, we do have the Sneko Eye presented to us. That's probably my pick then. Spirit Sparrow in chat asks, how do Sands of Time and Sneko Eye interact? 
When you're confused, the initial cost of Sansa time is random. And when we say random with Sneko Eye, we mean 0, 1, 2, or 3 with equal probability. Those are the four possible costs that Sneko Eye can roll a card to. So any card that has a native cost higher than Sneko Eye's range, so any card with a cost of 4 or 5, um, will always get cheaper thanks to Sneko Eye. Once the random cost of the Sands of Time is established, then every turn we retain it gets cheaper by one. So if it costs one initially and we end our turn, it stays in hand, it goes down to zero. We play it and we draw it again, it gets a new random cost because Sneko Eye is re-randomizing card costs every time you draw them. So once the Sands of Time is reduced to zero, it, it doesn't keep the discount for future draws. And, oh man, we have pellets. Hmm. Pellets, Sneko Eye. Or I could play with Dome or Stone. Interesting. So good and so bad at the same time. So, Orange Pellets is the only way to remove the confusion effect, which actually really benefits the interaction I was just talking about with Sansa Time. If you remove the confusion after the fact, you know what, we're going to do this, then... We will stop randomizing cards. All cards will be locked in at their current cost, for better or for worse. And we'll have to deal with that. I like taking a lot of... Combats are much better than events now for two reasons. Actually, for three reasons. Reason one. We have... Lesson learned, so we can get permanent upgrades per combat. Reason two, we have Singing Bowl, so we can gain max health per combat. And reason three, we have Snekawai, which means we want to look at a lot of card rewards to find high-cost cards, like Wallop and such. Yes, if you remove the confusion, you still do draw seven cards per turn. So it's still a very powerful draw engine. A note that we, if we determine that activating the orange pellets is undesirable and removing the confusion is undesirable, we may have the control to not do that, since uh, it's a fairly specific condition to activate the orange pellets. Our act boss is Bronze Automaton. Yeah, I'm not going to either of these shops, probably. I definitely would like to go to this shop, then. First up, the Bird Nerds. Unfortunately, I can only play three strikes. This fight could get weird. I want to hit the one, hit one of the ones that's buffing to bring them as low as uh, possible health-wise. Those ones are guaranteed to be attacking me next turn. Hopefully, they don't all attack. Good. Good. Okay, this is great. Only does 13. So I can go Vigilance, Miracle, Empty Fist. Sands of Time, Bowling Bash, Vigilance. Uh -uh. Wait, sorry. Vigilance, Miracle, Empty Fist. I don't even need to do the Vigilance, actually, because we're going to kill both of these, right? Bowling Bash, Empty Fist, knocks you out of the air. Sands of Time, plus Lesson Learn, kills this one and gets an upgrade. Okay. Uh, but we need to make sure we play Bowling Bash first. Wonderful. Guess this technically does one more damage. Could apply Vuln and then play the Empty Fist. I'd rather keep the Miracle. Let's 
So Miracle, Empty Fist, Bowling Bash, yes. Fun fight. Only took one damage. And we get uh, two health back, essentially. These two unupgraded commons, so stinky. Josh Brock says, how many hours do I have to play before I stop forgetting that I have Gremlin Horn? It took me... about 2,000 hours to feel like I could remember most of my relics consistently, and even then the unceasing top is still really iffy. So yeah, probably about 2,000 hours. That's my guess. How many hours until you remember the echo form you played 10 seconds ago? I'll let you know when I get there. Still TBD. I don't... Um, hmm, Ancient Potion. There's a few specific things I could block with that, but I think these potions are much better. All right, shop. What do you got? There's a power that we want. Mental Fortress. Whenever we change stances, gain block. I can afford Mental Fortress Waffle card removal. Waffle is uh, quite a bit of current health. It takes us from 58 to 80 health, meaning this is plus 22 right now. And in one of the more dangerous acts of the Spire, plus 22 feels pretty nice. It's also helping us build up a, a very generous pool of max health that is going to be really useful for us come the heart fight eventually. And the best part, we get to remove a strike. I think I'd remove a strike over a defend right now. Master strategy, definitely a lot less tempting because of the confusion. 302 gold. So I've heard that a lot, Novaks. Uh, many players to me have stated that they overrated Sozu, or they, they felt like Sozu was really, really good when they were first starting. And... The truth is, if, if you're not effectively using your potions, then Sozu is a really good relic because you're you're using you're losing out on a resource that you might even just be forgetting entirely, leaving them in your potion slots completely unaware of them. Uh, it's pretty easy to do that with so many things going on in Spire. Uh, if you're relatively inexperienced, thinking about your potions might not even be something that you do. So Sozu's great if you don't even use your potions. But the more and more you use the potions and realize just how valuable they are, the, the less effective the Sozu becomes for you because you're, you're now having to give up a resource that you're using rather than give up a resource you're not using. Sulfur, thanks for two full years, 24 months, and Tropius, thank you for 20. I am going to buy this waffle, I think. It's expensive, but I like it. This might allow me to go for the Burning Elite this act. We'll see. don't want to go to too many rest sites. Do I actually want to go... Because we have Lesson Learned. Do I want to go this way instead? Very probably. Uh, and if we have more health, I think that's more viable. Because rest sites are what? Just health? Who needs health when I am invulnerable? Also Kremlin Horn. I mean, come on. This should be easy. I'll take my one dollar and leave. How dare you. Miracle Vigilance. Get calm. No, keep the miracle.
So I can remove both the Confusion and the Hex by playing a Power Attack and Skill. Problem is, that does require me to play... Cards that put days into the draw pile. I think I'd rather not remove any debuffs here. Although if I want to activate Crush Joints, hmm... Defend, Crush Joint, Strike Sands. Bring it to a fraction of health here. Get a minimum of days put into the raw pile. Just bring it to nine. Try to draw the lesson learned. Okay, no luck there. Uh, we could miss this upgrade, or I could try to use a potion. I'm just happy missing the upgrade quite entirely. Works for me. Definitely don't want to flurry now. I think we're in good shape to take two elites here. Let's do it. As you continue your ascent, thick black smoke begins to billow out of the ground and walls around you, coalescing into three masked forms that start to speak. Would you like a taste of our power? They offer us apparitions, lose half of our max HP, including 41 current health to gain three apparitions. Apparitions are very nice, but I think they're pretty bad with Snekoi in general, because they're ethereal. You lose them if you don't play them. With Snekoi, you're going to draw them more quickly and at random cost, meaning you may not be allowed to play them, meaning you might be forced to lose your intangible turns at the gain of nothing. I refuse. Even though we do have ways to gain a lot of that max health back, I refuse. On principle. Make this a power attack skill sort of situation. Inner Peace, Empty Fist, Mental Fortress. Or Mental Fortress, Empty Fist, Defend. Both equivalent. So, Confusion wears off. All of our cards will be at their normal cost. And we're drawing seven per turn. Maybe that wasn't a good thing. Unfortunately, we have not drawn the Vigilance. Which might require my Swift Potion here to save a reasonable amount of health. Hmm. Or I could just go Crush Joints, Defend, Defend, take uh, a reasonable chunk of health, keep our potions. Our very valuable potions. What's our potion chance at? Miasma Plasma, thanks for 39 months. The Triple Baker's Dozen. 40%. So we're quite likely to find a potion either here or from the First Elite. Mad Hatter 910, thanks for the Tier 1 sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I think I'm just going to take the damage here. Attacked again, but I'm more equipped to block this one. Problem is, the lesson learned is now in my hand again. Hmm. That's okay. Let's go Vigilance. Exit Calm again. We're at 14 block. Inner Peace Miracle Defend saves me the most health this turn. We can enter Wrath next turn safely. It's going to be attacked again. Uh, debuffed again, rather. So we take very little this turn. 61. And we're guaranteed to draw the lesson learned, and it's guaranteed to be one cost. Yeah, that was worth it. We do find a potion, though. It's a skill potion. And we find a Foresight Plus. The start of your turn, scry four. It's another power for pellets, and it's a, a very useful effect in general, letting us look at the top four cards every turn. I think we can already pretty much rule out infinite combos because of the Sneko Eye. I like it a lot. And I'm going to keep these good potions. We fought hard to preserve this particular pair of potions. 
Okay, so far I'm feeling pretty good. We're trying to do three elites in the next few floors here. Again, Gremlin Horn hopefully carrying this interaction for us. Hey there, Bowling Bash. Would you like to do 45 damage to a nerd right now? Because I would sure like it if you did that. This would be a reasonable time to consider Stance Potion for Wrath as well, because I can kill two of them this turn if I do that. Bowling Bash will be an instant kill. Crush Joints would deal, and then essentially multiply by three. So this is 30, this is 30. So Crush Joints, Lesson Learn kills one. Bowling Bash kills one. Otherwise, the option is Bowling Bash and Lesson Learned, one of them. Crush Joints, the other one. We draw one. We take 20. And then there's still, you know, a two slavers fight I have to deal with. Let's use the Wrath Potion. I think this is what it's for, right here. Could kill the middle one, but the, the front and back are the ones doing the real damage this turn, so they're the priority. Oh, we got Empty Fist? Yeah. Good. And an Eruption. 27, 27. Can't quite play uh, any of these others, unfortunately. So close to being able to outright kill. That's fine. So take seven. Happy with that. Get a stone calendar dealing massive damage to all enemies on turn seven. Offered an upgraded crush joints. Don't really feel like I need two of them, although you never know, actually. Seems less useful thanks to bag of marbles. Is Bronze Automaton, though? I could see it. I could see it. Uh, but I think with Sneko Eye, we'll take the max off. Alright, do I feel like I need to rest for 25 health, or can I get a specific upgrade? I think I should rest. We'll get basically all the health back. We would like to be able to fight up to three more elites. I'd actually like to go for the Burning Elite here, if we could. And since we're still getting an upgrade in most fights from the lesson learned, I'm not worried about falling behind. You know? So, lesson learned only works on the gremlin leader themselves here. I can't lesson learn to gremlin to get a kill, unfortunately. Play this at the end? No, I want this now. Oh. Seventy eight plus thirty thirty. That's not enough. About 78 plus 30 plus 27 plus 15. 150. Oh, we're so close. Is this lethal? Not quite. We are just shy. Just, just shy of being able to get there. So I might as well use the empty fist on the gremlin wizard then. Could try to get there with Swift Potion. I think we can just draw back to the lesson learned. It really won't be that hard. It's not that hard. So if I could play lesson learned then Empty Fist, that would kill. So I technically we have lethal. We just don't have lesson learned lethal. To further clarify, yes, it is. It is lethal. Thirty plus twenty-seven, dead but can't do 27 plus 30 because then we're no longer in Wrath. 
And of course we get a zero cost bowling bash. Of course we do. Still not enough. All right, we'll be back for that lesson learned. I thought so. Power, skill, power, attack. We are being attacked by Grim Leader here, so we may not get our wish. We do get our wish. Easy peasy. We get even more max health via the mango. Heck, we are chonky. And a wish. Oh my goodness. For three cost, we can choose plated armor, money, or strength, all of which are useful in their own right. So our wish came true. We got our wish after all. A wish amid. I wish I wish I was a fish amid. Matryoshka in the second chest. That's a big stinky thumbs down from me. And this is the last, this is the worst possible time to find this. I guess you could find it in the third chest. That's even worse. Um, but this is our next two chests will contain two relics. Problem is this was the second out of three guaranteed chests, which means we're, if we take this relic, it's only going to give us one additional relic on average. And if we don't take this relic, then we also get one additional relic because we don't get the have to take the blue key. So we're better off just taking the blue key now. This also means we can take Cursed Key from our boss and be very happy about it. Now, it is possible to get a random chest, but whatever. And I'm actually exceedingly happy to see this opponent here, the Book of Stabbing. Why? Because Book of Stabbing here means this can't be a super Book of Stabbing. It means that we get to use the Gremlin Horn against the Burning Elite. So this is great. I'm going to play Vigilance, Defend, Strike. We're going to be happy. This is an Act 2 Burning Elite kind of run. Would this health total? As long as this Book of Stabbing doesn't absolutely murder me, then uh, yeah. Definitely. We probably can't wish for money in this fight, though. It's going to depend on what wish costs, anyway. Oof. That might be the Swift Potion. It's in the draw pile. Empty Fist is in the draw pile. Yeah, that's going to be the Swift Potion. Alternately, is this just lethal right now? Without even needing to think about it. So how much energy do we have? We have a lot of energy we can spend. We have uh, six essential energy. Two banked in Calm, one from the Miracle. So before I think about whether or not we use Swift Potion or anything fancy, what if I wish for Strength and play all the attacks? Specifically, the, the most damage order is going to be Wish for Strength, Eruption, Miracle, Crush Joints, and then everything else. So Wish would give me 3 Strength. This would do 12 from the Eruption, plus 12 times 2, 24 from the crush joints, and everything else is then plus three times three. So strike plus is gonna deal 12 times three, 36. Sands of time is gonna be 28 times three. 150, yeah, we that's like super duper freaking lethal actually. In fact, that's so much damage that I'm gonna now evaluate without the wish for strength. 26. Oh, right. Yeah, it's 3 strength, not 2. Okay, let's let's recalc that also. What if it's just 9 plus 10 plus 27 plus 30 plus 26 times 3? 154. We're just shy of a kill without the wish for strength. So, yeah, I'm just going to wish for strength and kill it. How much is 25 gold and a potential upgrade worth? Not worth endangering our ability to take this path. Don't forget, we get four more combats in a row. We'll get plenty of wishes. We'll get plenty of upgrades. I don't need to land every single wish and every single upgrade. I just need to be conservative with my resources. Okay. 
efficient with my resources. Get an Auric Kelkum, giving us guaranteed block. We don't have enough. Three cards that are fairly mediocre. Wouldn't say any of these are necessarily amazing. We'll go to a hundo max HP. That's a, that's a truly absurd amount. 100 max HP with Watcher in the middle of Act 2. Good lord. Already gotten 12 from the Singing Bowl, so it's almost been better than the Mango. Cool. Yeah, three uncommons there. That's kind of cool. Wee, that's a good, uh, good set of cards. So I'll just kill the Centurion if I have enough damage. We can do... Uh, 30 times 2 to this nerd? Oh yeah, he's super dead. If I have Vigilance, then Eruption. I have 2 energy left. Strike, Bowling, Bash, I have 3 energy left. I can empty Fist at the end. And we get to Foresight, so I'll take 1, kill the Knight. Drawing the wish as well is quite important. Can't do them both, which means you get to live for now, lady. Gotta be careful of the stone calendar, though. Three more fairly mediocre cards. It says take the max HP. Shame we haven't seen any wallops yet. That's all right. Triple birds. This gremlin horn has been going ballistic, and I love it. This is another easy wish for strength. Or er, for money, excuse me. Wish for money. Kill one of them. Ooh, and we get to purge the confusion, which I'm cool with here. It's only 20 now. But I can go Eruption, Bowling Bash, Inner Peace, Miracle Defend. Even better. Empty Fist, then Inner Peace. Guaranteed to draw the Lesson Learn next turn along with the Strike. That's a guaranteed upgrade. Alright, most of those starters are now upgraded. We can... There's not, not really that much in the deck to upgrade. This is the other reason I haven't been too worried about an occasional missed lesson learned here or there, because there are so many things... Um, there's relatively few unupgraded cards left, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. Seven unupgraded cards. It's time. Fasting is here, giving us strength and dexterity at the cost of energy each turn. It's time to go fast. Yeah, I've got an easy wish. Fasting, kill with an attack here. I can even block the Angry Gremlin with Orichalcum. Six metallicized, really no penalty at all here. That's a, a pretty easy elite after, ultimately. I think we want to use the sands to kill the fat gremlin. We also end up locking in some cheap prices. Only real downside is the three cost strike, and that's not big of a, much of a deal anyway. Certainly not lethal here. We can only kill one of the two gremlins, and it's going to be the fat gremlin so that I don't get weakened or frailed. Um, but we should be able to block pretty well next turn. And we'll be able to uh, guarantee to afford car cards. So yes, yeah, go wish for money. 
Don't think I need the strength here. Fasting, sands of time the fat gremlin. Purge the debuff, get a new card. Play the mental fortress, not the defend. Nor the lesson learns. Because Oracalcum is going to block this hit. So we don't even get attack. Grim Leader is summoning more minions. Good. Well, I will kill this 41 hit point mad gremlin. Good lord. He's chonky. Bowling Bash will kill him. I'm going to go Inner Peace. Crush Joints. Eruption. Bowling Bash. Strike you, empty fist you. Be mad. So, easy kill on the leader, but lesson. be enough, but that Strike Plus will help. Strike Plus does 24, leaves him at 6, then we kill. Get the Fasting upgraded, and we can bottle our Sands of Time, which is extra good because we're frequently purging our Confusion. We want to be able to draw Sands of Time before we purge Confusion. Bottling it guarantees that. And it retains in my hand until I'm ready to play it, too. Such an easy key to get. Do we want a wave of the hand? I mean, we've got Oracalcum, so it's pretty good. Yeah, wave of the hand is very good. It's guaranteed to apply at least one week to all enemies. Probably more than that, and it's a good artifact shredder besides. Not gonna take a smoke bomb. All right, we crushed through the Burning Elite, no problem. Barely took any damage at all this act. Feeling quite confident against the Bronze Automaton, but what about the Snake Plant? What about the Snake Plant? I could just kill it right now. I've got a lesson I could learn instead. Should have lowered its health a bit more precisely is what I'm feeling right now. Yeah, because now what? Now I cannot do it, can I? Or can I? 9 plus 7 plus 10 is enough, right? Because you gain 3 plus 4 blocks, so all we have to do is combine 27 damage. This is... Oh, wait, that's 26. Son of a gun. Um, what if I purge the weakness? What if I do Foresight, Miracle, Inner Peace, Strike Plus for 9, Lesson Learned deals 14. So 9 plus 14 versus 23. That's enough. Oh, why Inner Peace? I don't need to Inner Peace. You're right. Uh, it's just Foresight, Miracle, Strike. Oh, and then I can even Strike Lesson Learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just Purge the Weak this way. That's right. I was, wasn't thinking of the miracle as a skill there. So, who needs to use the flex potion when you could do this? Third eye is actually pretty good. Especially now that we have fasting, we want more... Um, we want more cards that benefit from dexterity, because we have wave of the hand, we want more cards that benefit from dexterity. How's it going, Bob the Snake? This is this is potentially number 15 in the win streak. That's right. Could have gone pressure points. Alas. So I can upgrade here or recall here. I'm going to upgrade our wish. And I'm probably going to wish for strength. We have plenty of money. I don't really feel like I need to wish for every single dollar. Um, when my main focus here is getting to the next act, winning this fight. 
Zingman said, why did I buy pellets initially? So that I can remove vulnerable from the heart. Plain and simple. Uh, when it comes to watcher runs especially, you have to be thinking about the heart from floor one. Because of how much of a jump in difficulty it is. Watcher can often tackle the main game, no problem. But it is act four, you need to always be looking out for answers. Uh, I know, Marshall Gaming. I, I was thinking about that, too. Thankfully, I, I feel confident in my defects. But first, we got to get through Watcher Ironclad in Silence, so we'll, we'll take it one step at a time. Hey, glad to hear it, Matt Diesel. You keep watching, I'll keep streaming. All right, this is an excellent... Although Eruption at three cost is bad, this is otherwise an excellent, excellent set of card costs to lock in. Zero cost defend, one cost inner peace, cheap sands of time. The three cost eruption's problematic, but I can work around that. I'm not gonna play the eruption though. Well, obviously can't play both. We want to flex potion this fight if I'm going to purge. I think I either flex potion or wish for strength. I don't need to do both. So I guess the question here is, am I willing to sell this flex potion for 25 golds? I think yes, actually. In which case... Played a skill yet? Yes. And a power? Yes. So I can just eruption, keep the miracle? 30 gold. Eve, that's right. 30 gold. <laughs> this is like almost lethal on the boss. Spicy. Probably Bowling Bash, Sands of Time, Fasting, Vigilance. With Miracle, of course. Hand, inner peace, third eye. Don't have foresight down. Might have to block the hyper beam the way uh, because of playing the wish, but I'm okay with that. We have so much health after all. Wave of the hand first. I could go wave of the hand, defend inner peace, or foresight inner peace. Having this thing weak for next turn seems pretty good. Not playing foresight seems pretty bad. Should have did the foresight. I guess I could use Swift Potion, but I really don't think I need to. Ouch. Hit points are a resource. 
or something. Stone calendar coming in. Actually looks like we might miss the lesson learned, unless this is lesson learned lethal, which it actually looks like it might be. Yeah, it is. Okay. Ooh, yeah. This is some nice cards. Vault versus Wish, number two. I'm thinking Vault, personally. We've got plenty of money. There is a limit to how much money is useful in Slay the Spire. Once you can buy everything in the store, everything useful in the store, which sometimes isn't even that much money worth of stuff, then there's no use for more of it. Vault is so, so nice for getting an extra turn. Works great with Wave of the Hand in particular. I think I like that over the Wish, although only just barely, truly. Amazing. And our choice is the Pyramid, the Cage, or the Coffee Dripper. Pyramid says you no longer discard your hand from turn to turn. Empty Cage says remove two cards from the deck. It's funny, I was watching uh, Papa's stream a little bit the other day. I think yesterday, and he actually managed to win with Runic Pyramid Snekawai on Watcher. That's pretty wild. But I think the best thing for this deck is four energy per turn. Pick up this Coffee Dripper and just get more energy. With 102 max health, it's pretty hard to imagine needing all of it at once. Iman says, with Pellet's Pyramid becomes good, though. Hmm, maybe not on three energy per turn though. Especially with all these high base cost cards, right? If we're if we're purging the pellets, uh, the the confusion debuff, then we're just actually getting a whole bunch of very expensive cards with a ton of card draw, which is not necessarily good. So I'm cool with the uh, coffee dripper here. All right, we might as well go to an early store. Probably three combats along the way. Three lesson learns, three singing bowls, three wishes. Again, consistently getting more on average out of a, an enemy. Better yet, it's a guaranteed improvement from an enemy room versus an unknown quantity at an unknown room. Oh, and look how many shops I can go to. I can go to three shops? Oh my goodness. Uh, excuse me. So when I actually said Devil Wish wouldn't have been useful, I was lying out of my teeth. Holy crap, look at this. does make maybe 999 gold a lot more attractive as an option. Food for thought. Yeah, we don't even care that much about Mind Bloom. I mean, it is... It is pretty sweet. Just the rare relic in the combat is good. Could even be four shops if the event room gives me one. That's true. That's true. Have to play the attack to clear debuffs. Which I would like to do, right? Because I already drew all the expensive stuff. Not enough. It's going to be too much if I fasting. inner piece to draw two more. We're guaranteed to get lesson learned in hand next turn, though. This 
discard all that to guarantee less than learns. Vault Plus is actually a good upgrade because we're sometimes removing the confusion. Would we like a Sanctity? Sanctity is pretty good. It's card draw and benefits from our dexterity score. Let's pick one up. He man says, am I worried about blocking the heart at this moment? We already have many, many pieces of our heart blocking strategy in the deck, and they are as follows. Mental Fortress to give us block per stance change, Fasting to give us more block with block cards, as well as block cards to block with, and Wave of the Hand so that we can weaken the heart for a very long time and make sure that overall damage is reduced. That plus the huge amount of max health should be most of what we need. That and we can remove Vulnerable too with the orange pellets. So there's a, a lot going on in our favor. Oh, and Foresight as well as the other Scry, so that I can guarantee that I draw the defense cards that I need each turn. How's it going with the one hour runs? Well, currently our focus is somewhere else entirely, but they're coming. They're coming. Be careful of the stone calendar here. It's all possible. Has to be the final kill in order to land lesson learned in this fight. Nation versus cutthroat fates. Both unupgraded, eh, both mediocre. Streak Timber, that's right. One card you've unlocked but have never seen. Might be one of the generated cards. One of Watcher's created cards. I'm gonna skip that. Alright, do we want an event? I think we just want more combats. Just keep taking more combats. Although, though, yeah, I was about to say, there is the risk of transient, which means we won't get a lesson learned, probably. Hmm. These are not costs I'd be too happy to lock in, actually. Though I have to play a skill if I want the vulnerable to continue, so probably we'll be purging our costs anyway. I guess that's fine. Skill. Power. A mere 120, no problem, right? We can do it. Together. Still four turns, we can probably see this again. Plus you just need to make sure we wish for money without getting hurt at the same time. Easier said than done. and then Vault. Try to find, yes, the Wish. So 
we can go a little more vulnerable, do a ton of damage, wish for money. And then the last turn is a little spooky. We do have Stone Calendar because we wished we get to use Stone Calendar against, or, sorry, because we vaulted. Get to use Stone Calendar against Transient, which is extra hilarious here. Bonk. How often do you see that? It's cool. You get something special if you bring the Transient to zero. There's an achievement for doing so, but nothing special beyond that. We still really are missing some core cards here, huh? Hmm. Okay. Oh my god. Chat, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Sacraville sees it. This card normally does not work with Snackoi, because you're just going to, uh, particularly the upgraded version, reduce the card cost of all cards in your hand to one this combat. Normally not actually very effective with Snackoi, because the redrawn cards are going to be re-randomized. But if you purge the confusion then this allows us to reset any card that gets stuck at 2 or 3 cost back down to a base value of 1. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's right, and zero cost cards are unaffected. And if we purge confusion before drawing it the first time, it'll be natively zero cost as well. There's also a talk to the hand here, a second copy of fasting here. Card removal here. Does it set its own cost to one? I don't think so. I don't think so. But yeah, I think we do fasting. I think we do talk to the hand. I think we remove a card. And I think I want this enlightenment. Truly. I think I want this enlightenment. We could even remove the last unupgraded strike if we want to. There are more shops, so we don't want to spend every dollar we have. But I think this is actually a genuinely really good... Enlightenment with snack eye, and that's not something I get to say very often. I like Talk of the Hand as well for generating uh, Wave of the Hand procs. Kind of nice with the Bowling Bash. We don't actually have that many attacks that we play, but I still think it's going to be helpful. There's also Medical Kit allowing us to delete status cards. I don't know how useful that is. I think we'd be better off with a different relic. Do I forestall the removal? No, because of Lesson Learned. I am going to buy Enlightenment. I don't know if the Enlightenment's actually going to be good, necessarily, but I think we're going to try it. I'd also maybe consider Protect if I wasn't already relatively block-dense. I think we'll be okay. And we're going to be going for more Elites here. A couple ways to get more Elites. We don't need Rest Sites right now. <laughs> oh. Enlightenment making Vault cheaper here. No reason to play Sands of Time yet. The power's played. Definitely want to be wishing for money at every opportunity. We got more shops coming up. This will purge. You can go Miracle Tuck to the Hand. I don't need to block for that much, because next turn I'm going to remove this Constriction debuff. Guess I don't even need to purge yet. Let's just keep things as they are. Didn't draw either fasting, that's funny. I could do Third Eye Sanctity to try to do it.
I always just discard that enlightenment if I don't want it at a particular moment. Power attack. Skill. Of course, there won't be any purging this time. Actually, wait, I've got Mental Fortress. There will be purging once more. Although, all my attacks do too much damage, so no, there won't be. Doesn't matter, I block for a Kajillion. Good luck, nerd. Pressure points plus. No thanks. Not today. Funny, we could actually make use of Evaluate because we have uh, no confusion. I don't think we want it, though. All right, how are we doing upgrade-wise? We have one up unupgraded Defend, Mental Fortress, three, four, five, six, seven unupgraded cards still. Okay, we're on track to get fully upgraded by the end of the run, if we don't miss any more. Although I'm, I'm okay missing the Sands of Time on this guy, because it's pretty bad. Otherwise... Very difficult to kill Nemesis on a particular turn. Just kind of tends to be really rude. Overall. Vault is three cost. I could do Foresight, Miracle, Wish Vault. Or I could play a Fasting. No, I can't play Fasting. I like Foresight Miracle Wish Vault. Get that problem out of the way. Although that's going to desynchronize my stone calendar. Tragic. Alright, these are decent enough costs to lock in. Draw first. Question mark? I kind of like these cards to be in the draw pile, actually, so I don't think I want to draw with Sanctity. So do I play Vigilance or Talk to the Hand? That's the other question. I did want to draw. Heck. Mistakes have been made. Big mistakes. Yeah, that's my fault. Uh, here I'll use the Swift Potion, I believe. Yeah, I'm relatively okay with that. Let's go... Defend Sanctity. Enlightenment. Fortress. Inner Peace. Defend. Attack. Attack. Okay, not too bad. Still take a bunch. Certainly could have been worse. You are intangible this turn. Once again, I bungled things a little bit. Needed to discard two cards there. Okay, we can set up a uh, Sands of Time kill next turn, though, it looks like, so we're fine. Although I can't be in Wrath. Or can I? I would like to win the fight. Uh, yeah, let's just take a little bit of damage and win here. I'm kind of scared of this fight. A 
We even get to land the lesson learn. All right, perfect. Let's get a sundial every three times we shuffle the draw pile, gain some energy. An already upgraded protect is a little bit better than an unupgraded protect. We are going to want more and more and more block as we get further into this run. I'm going to grab that. 12 cards, match them. To keep them, would you like another wish? I would take another eruption, actually, as well. Give me another wish. You got it. I'll take it. Double wish power. I wish for more wishes. It's true. A couple different ways to get two elites here. I'm not actually sure if I'm going to go to both of these stores. We'll see. Reptomancer versus the Gremlin Horn. Good luck, Reptomancer. Power attack skill if I want it? Not sure I do. These aren't exactly great costs to lock in, but it's more over that we just want to make sure we're not having uh, random costs, period. Miracle Empty Fist. Means I can play fasting and it'll, it should automatically trigger the orange pellets again, I believe. Yeah, so we just gain four strength, four dex. Let's take lesson learned off the menu for the moment. Perfect. Keep the protect for next turn. Enlightenment Plus is going to be really good with that. But what I don't want to do is... Get stuck in Wrath here. See, with seven dexterity, our block cards are just so dang powerful. Barely matters what I choose to do on each turn. We're farming Reptomancer now. Prolonging this fight on purpose for our own advantage. Because we can get away with it. earlier in the fight. That's fine. We'll go Eruption Tuck and so I'm guaranteed to draw the zero cost Vigilance here. Also bonus energy. We could easily just kill the Reptomancer directly, but like I said, we're prolonging this fight for our own benefit. Make the noise. Yeah. So I block for 99. Also, you're dead to Sansa at uh, Calendar if I don't kill you right now. 
We got a potion belt, letting us hold more potions. Excellent for the late game. And it could take another lesson learned, or it could take another mental fortress. Honestly, most of our block is coming from direct sources at this point. I'm not changing stances enough to merit a second copy of Mental Fortress. Let's gonna take the hit points here. I think we're far better off looking at at least one more shop than not. So let's head this way. Grab the boot for good luck. We gotta recall it one of these two fires. Finally, Rushdown is here. When we enter Wrath Draw 2, I think that's still worth including. Not necessarily worth including here. Prismatic Shard, unfortunately. Causing combat reward screens to contain colorless cards. It's fun. It's not necessarily what I'm looking for here. And in, more relevantly, there's just not enough card rewards left for it to be worth compared to spending the money on something else. I think we just take the rush down, go to the second shop. None of these other relics or cards are all that appealing. So like, yeah, I could buy Tungsten Rod, but I think we can do better at this shop. And I'm not going to pay out for uh, two removals here, because the current removal cost is 150 gold, and I'm not that rich. Oh, Gremlin Horn. Please do the thing. Smite my foes. But they might know. True suffering. The Enlightenment. Fasting. Bend. Got a strike. And then vault. Here I just wish defend. No foresight? No, I can wish miracle. Foresight. Get those stinky daisies out of here. Unacceptable. Do you hear me? Bad. You're all bad. First of all, how dare you? Still don't want to collect. Keep taking max health. We're now at 24 health from the singing bowl, 14 from the mango, 112 max health total. Such a chonky watcher. All right, so uh, this shop I can get a little bit more behind. There's Abacus giving us block whenever we shuffle the draw pile. That definitely happens often enough to be worthwhile. There's also ah. Dead Branch. Whenever we exhaust a card, add a new random card into my hand. And there's plenty of cards in this deck that say Exhaust on them. New random cards, they won't necessarily be up to the quality of the old cards, but it's simply more cards in our hand. And that alone is uh, well worth considering here. <laughs> but the Strawberry for even more max HP. 119. Sadistic Nature kind of cute with Wave of the Hand. I don't think that's going to be enough, though. Will the Dead Branch cards be Sneko cost? No, regardless of whether we're confused or not. Dead Branch cards are added to your hand directly rather than being drawn. And so they bypass the confusion effect of the Sneko Eye. Branch is quite expensive, but I think it's quite good, too. Awakened One's going to be interesting. Probably have to wish for Plated Armor in the Awakened One fight. And maybe avoid one or two powers. Probably don't play the rush down in the Awakened One. If we were to remove a card, I would recommend probably a Strike, even though they're upgraded now. Is Wish an Exhaust card? Yes. 
Yes. I'll buy it. I'll take the stick. And then, with wishing, we'll have money for the next shop, too. Where we'll probably stock up on potions, if we haven't filled up the potions. Enigma Engine, thank you so much for 17 months of support. Is that a sign? I wish for more wishes. I wish for less Nemesi. Curious. Power, power, talk to the hand, just get everything in play. Yeah. Tantrum's pretty nice. Is that 10 burns already? Yes. Terrifying. Tangible this turn. There's no actual benefit to playing the vault, that's what you're telling me. In fact, the vault will desynchronize our stone calendar. Which I would strongly prefer to avoid doing. play these now, because we're never ever going to be able to get the lesson learned again. Wish for money, though. Actually, full block without me using the protect, I love it. Get him. Stone calendar. Get Pantograph, healing us 25 at the start of boss fights. The perfect thing to top up this coffee turbo deck going into the final few fights. Really thrilled to see that, and even more thrilled to see a real tantrum. Stance change, enter Wrath with Rushdown, hit three times with Talk to the Hand, and a huge amount of strength. This is the damage card we've been looking for. I think this deck is dang near complete. I'm thrilled. We have a handful of upgrades remaining. I like the Rushdown upgrade. I like the... Actually, going into the Awaken one, I think the Wave of the Hand upgrade is going to be the most important. Um, we're not going to play this during the Awaken one fight. Don't forget, we'll get a few more upgrades after this still. We get one upgrade with Lesson Learned against Awaken one. Ideally, one upgrade with Lesson Learned against the second boss. One upgrade from the Fire at the beginning of the next act. And maybe one more upgrade off of Spire Spear or Spire Shield. So we can accumulate as many as five more upgrades from here. But I think this is the first and most important one at the moment. Back to full 112 hit points. You'll love to see it. Now, the quintessential problem here, every power we play is going to give the Awakened One two points of strength. So we have to be careful about which ones we choose to play. This looks like an acceptable opener, though.
I may choose to wish for plated armor in this fight to protect myself better, rather than wishing for money two times or strength two times or anything like that. Wish can give me eight plated armor. It's a twelve. Eight. You could perfectly block with this, huh? Hmm. I like not losing my plated armor. So Fasting, Miracle, Wish, Crush Joints, Defend. That's the turn I'm proposing for myself, and it's a pretty good turn. Let's see what this generates first. Tank already. Ooh, that's tough. Glad I have so many hit points. Lesson learned is here. So I can get that out of the way at least. I could kill both birds pretty easily. I'm actually not taking that much. 20 at best. And we'll get two more draws from killing two birds. Sands of Time would kill outright. So yeah, talk lesson here. Swivel. Oh, I like that. That's essentially just free 12 block. Swivel then play the lesson learned. Judgment. Also pretty cool. And Vault got into my hand. Even better. So I could Foresight... No, I can't Foresight Vault. Just Vault. Or we can... Kill this fool. Does Bowling Bash Judgment do it? 28 plus 30. Yeah, that's enough. 58. Wave of the Hand reduces this to almost nothing, so we'll take basically zero damage. Good enough. As we get the block from the thingy. So take two damage and lose one plated armor. Good enough in my book. So again, we don't want to play too many more powers, and we'd ideally like to keep the awakened one weak. The awakened one. Could do the mental fortress. That's pretty reasonable. Let's go Fortress. Eruption Interpiece? Eruption Sands of Time Interpiece? Yes. Could have also done Simmering Fury. This all wish for money. Feels like this fight is well in way, well under hand. Swivel defend enough. Got to block for 12 by 4, 48. Currently blocking 24. No, that's not enough. Have to be. Swivel Protect. This is two armor potions. No, one armor potion and one wish. This is how we got to 11 plated armor. It is kind of an unusual number, I agree. Hmm. Interesting.
interesting. Some of these cards are not useful to me. This will do so much more damage if I allow myself to enter Wrath. Can I kill you this turn? Looks like I might be able to. Oh yeah, and we have um, Stone Bonkinger coming in, so yeah, we'll just kill you. because of the vigilance, actually. So if I need to play the vigilance, I don't think I can play the fasting, huh? Oh, actually. Okay. Well, still, hold on. Turn that into a Miracle Plus, or play the Rushdown. The Rushdown down. Time to be weak forever, nerd bird. Or maybe just dead immediately, that's the other option. So close to being judged outright. Let's try to get Sundial to two. Don't think it matters much, but I'll do it. Second boss is the Time Eater. Not too much of a problem, I don't think. If only the judgment had been upgraded. Uh, so we just use Enlightenment here. It's not as complicated as it looks. Enlightenment. Wave of the hand, a bunch of skills, block the... Weaken the Time Eater for a very long time here. Those are actually... Let's discard that one, draw these two. Keep you vulnerable as well. Sure. Never liked you. So you say. All right, this is a good turn to both play six cards and purge our debuffs here. Pretty happy with the card costs as they are. I will wish for more money. And then five more cards. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, simple as that. Don't play that. Do not play that card. But it leaves Wrath. Don't play that card. Let's 
So, best thing we can do on this turn is remove our debuffs. And then play a really good block card. So I'm thinking Tuck of the Hand, Foresight, Miracle. And then I can play Defend, Protect, take nothing. Won't Pellets just clear Blasphemy? You'd sure wish it would do that, but it is not a debuff effect. Tragically, not how it works. Get your stinky deep. Ooh, there's the Dead Branch Master Reality that we were asking for. I'm not going to play it yet, but I like that that's here. Take one. Master Reality would upgrade any cards generated by the Dead Branch, which is quite spicy indeed. Rushdown is in play. Attack. Power. Skill, skill. No, we can make it uh, the full Monty, right? So close. I can do Strike Defend Wish. That's pretty good. Mental Fortress Plus from the slimes. Nice. You do love to see it. How many more cards can I play? Not enough. Really appreciate if you would stop this tomfoolery, Tom Eater. So let's go Tantrum first. Mental Fortress Tantrum Vault, I think. Is that still okay? Could just go inner peace. I think that's better. Make an expunger plus, please. Yeah. Why not, right? Enlightenment, Windmill Strike, Lesson Learned. GG. All right, we wished for money twice. We upgraded twice. We only lost one hit point to Time Eater there. I'm feeling pretty good about the finale here. Last targeted upgrade, probably on the Fasting. Actually, the Tantrum for one more hit has got to be more impactful. It's our best damage card by far. Zap Crash says, will I do an Ironclad run next? Yes. Yeah, we'll do two today. Okay. Um, not the greatest potions, relics, or cards, quite frankly. Unupgraded cards in the deck. Third Eye, Fasting, Defend. So this guaranteed upgrades Defend and Third Eye. 
could also just remove one of those cards. I think removing a strike is a pretty good idea. I'm happy with strike remove and buy two potions. Weak potion is a nice insurance policy against heart. We only have one weak card, so just ensuring that we can always have weaken early on is pretty helpful. Um, and then the swift potion is, of course, really good too. Less inclined to take a skill potion. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with swift potion, weak potion, card remove. The rightmost relic here, Melange. This is the spice from the Dune universe, so it's a, a Dune reference. Whenever you shuffle your draw pile, scry for three. JHTM. Thank you so much for the very generous 10 gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. OWM says, why not remove the unupgraded defend? Well, because we can get up to like eight points of dexterity, seven or eight points of dex, which makes it block for 12. It's still pretty dang good. Heck, I'd even be okay with a second copy of Protect, now that I think about it. Can I afford that afterwards? Yes, I'll buy another Protect. Although we do need a certain density of attacks. Maybe we remove the un yeah, remove the unupgraded defend, add a protect. That's what I've actually changed my mind to. I love changing my mind at the last minute. Chat loves it too. Hmm. Damage headed my way. Honestly, this is a perfectly acceptable time to use one of our four potions, and the swift potion is probably the one I would use. Although I'd have to play a card first. Hmm. Scry three before drawing your first hand? Oh, I'd love that, Sarah Timiel. So you scry three at the start of combat before your hand is drawn. That'd be way better. That'd be akin to bag of preparation or gambling chip. Actually, very, very similar in functionality to a partial gambling chip. Okay, so Fasting Swift Potion, Fasting Swift Potion. Nice. We just have to play an attack. So I can also play the Third Eye. But I can't play the Wave of the Hand, which I would really like to do. I guess I could, if I'm willing to just have one less energy next turn. I can play Wave of the Hand and weaken the heck out of them. It's okay to take a little bit of damage in this fight, because we do have the pentagraph. Bowling Bash even does pretty good damage, actually. Okay. We'll we'll do the old B-Bash. I think we want to hit the shield for a bit here. Shield's probably the first one to die, but if I... I can always turn around with Sansa Time next turn. You say so. If you say so. Confusion gone. We can't afford this. I'll take the Protect Plus, though. Keep this. I could do Fasting, Protect, Turn Around. That's pretty good. Or I could do Vigilance Protect, turn around. Get me in Calm. Probably block for more, actually. Take another two. But much less Strength and Dexterity. And more damage taken this turn. Choices, choices. Dude, look at this enlightenment! Protect, one cost. Vault, one cost. Wish, one cost. So good. So good. Absolutely busted good. Tantrum first, of course. Although I actually should have wished for strength first, maybe. 
Not wishing for money. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. It is simply not to be. So close. How much do I want a card upgraded for this next fight, anyway? I suppose we might as well, as long as it's not costing us any health currently. There's literally no loss to keeping this fight going. And I got two protects that are basically free in my hand, so I'm liking those a lot. to wave the hand first. Plated armor then. Perhaps better question, was it maybe better to... Hmm. Well, we don't even get the upgrade. And now we've reset our sundial, unfortunately. Oh well. That's fine. We get a fourth potion, plus one strength, and probably a Deceive Reality if I want to really make sure we're blocking effectively. I really don't need to play that many attack cards to beat Heart. Let's take one more good block. And head on into our final battle with 112 max HP here. A set of four potions. Our odds of winning this are pretty dang good. And I see a spectacular turn one as well, where we can get not not just one, but uh, if we do pot this fasting, we can have 11 points of strength and dexterity for this fight. So that'd be Protect, Enlightenment, Dupe, Fasting. Might have to Miracle to do that. That's pretty good. But I have to protect first if I don't want to take a bunch of beat of death to this. And then, yeah, just fasting sands of time. Twelve strength, eleven dexterity. Pretty good. That was fast. A third eye, rushdown, miracle, windmill strike, vault. Actually, if I'm vaulting, I might not need to purge. Although, locking in our card. Uh, the card cost already locked in. Let's see here. What's on top of the deck? No. Bad heart. Bad. Yeah, let's go. Rushdown, Miracle... Oh. Well, that's better. Bing. Debuffs removed, nerd. Have a weak potion. 67, more like 33. Easy.
A mere 1 by 15. Also, easy. Might even be able to perfect this fight. Vigilance. Crush. Tantrum for way too much damage. Talk to the Hand Tranquility. Leave the wishes unplayed for now. And a second Sansa time. An expensive hand of cards. Brilliant. Probably use Tantrum first. Even if I Tantrum and then wave the hand, we're gonna apply so many turns a week and it's not gonna matter. So yeah, let's just Tantrum, or I could Eruption first so we get double damage Tantrum. But I, again, I think we're fine either way. I like putting Tantrum in the draw pile where it belongs. Let's actually get that Foresight into play. Empty Fist to leave Wrath. Eruption to enter Wrath again. Draw both, play the Foresight. Should be fine next turn. What's the max damage we take next turn if I really screw this up? 90? 90. And I have more than 90 health. Yeah, okay. So even if this goes catastrophically wrong, which it can't, then we're fine. That played. With nothing in the draw pile, we'll get to scry four. We do end in wrath, which is a little uncomfortable, but I scry four, draw six, and I have a swift potion. Yeah, like, I can just block 70 with the cards in my hand, pretty much. Or we can Vault. Also a completely acceptable option. Right now we're retaining too many cards. It's a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm just gonna Bowling Bash Vault here. Get all this stuff to stick. Try to find our Enlightenment to make things cheaper. There it is. <clears throat> so Enlightenment will make all this cheaper. Good. Let's do Tantrum first. 30 damage four times. Is this lethal? Everything, now you're one cost. Good job. Vigilance blocks for 23 plus 6. I wish for plated. Since we've already capped here. Right, Stone Calendar, this one's on you. G G, Mr. Hart. G G. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.